As World War II reached its dramatic conclusion, one American battleship would carve her name in U.S. Navy history. USS Missouri was there as the U.S. made the last strides towards the Japanese islands, supporting the troops landing in Iwo Jima and Okinawa. As the atomic bombs were being prepared for their earth-shattering debut, Missouri rained hell over the very heart of Japan, bringing the stubborn empire to its knees. Then, when devastation like the world had never seen was unleashed on top of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Japanese emperor finally decided to surrender, and Missouri's deck was chosen as the place to seal the peace agreement. With the war over and the age of battleships long gone, the world believed USS Missouri would be decommissioned and forsaken. But years later, the vessel was resurrected and equipped with Tomahawk missiles for a new age of warfare. The Last American Battleship The 1930s were coming to an end, and something was clear. A major global conflict was brewing. The ambitious and aggressive Japanese Empire was threatening the U.S. and its interest in the Pacific, and a confrontation was inevitable. The U.S. military had been studying a possible war against Japan as far back as 1906, when the War Plan Orange Protocol that described how to proceed in a conflict against the Empire was developed. As Japan's expansionist and warmonger ambitions became clearer by 1939, there was one significant problem. Its navy was becoming faster and more proficient than previously thought, and the strategies envisioned in the protocol required the U.S. to have superior ships. Specifically, U.S. strategists projected that the American fleet needed to engage and advance in the Central Pacific, with an extended line of communication and logistics that could be susceptible to high-speed Japanese cruisers. The main concern was that the U.S. Navy's traditional 21-knot battleships would be too slow to force the Japanese task forces into battle. At the same time, faster carriers and their cruiser escorts would be outmatched by the Japanese Congo-class battlecruisers, which had been recently upgraded to fast battleships. The U.S. Navy needed a new battleship, capable of achieving speeds of 30 knots to counter the threat of fast Japanese big gunships. Thus, despite admirals preferring the slower but heavily armed and armored battleships, a faster warship was necessary. The result was the Iowa-class battleship, a family of six fast battleships that took advantage of the Second London Naval Treaty's Escalator Clause, creating a fast and heavily armed battleship able to intercept the Japanese Congo-class warships. USS Missouri was the fourth Iowa-class battleship built by the U.S. Navy. She was ordered on June 12, 1940, and launched on June 29, 1944. The fifth and sixth battleships of her class, USS Illinois and USS Kentucky, were laid down in 1942, but never commissioned and later dismantled, making Missouri the last American battleship ever commissioned and built by the U.S. Navy. Surviving World War II USS Missouri left San Francisco on December 14, 1944, and sailed for Eliti in the Caroline Islands. She then became the temporary headquarters ship for Vice Admiral Mark A. Mitcher. The battleship immediately joined the Fast Carrier Task Force, where she escorted American aircraft carriers that launched a massive airstrike on Tokyo in January of 1945. Afterward, Missouri supported American forces during the invasion of Iwo Jima in February. Missouri was tasked with an escorting role, but she was able to provide formidable anti-aircraft support by shooting down several Japanese warplanes in Iwo Jima. The battleship then moved to the Japanese Inland Sea, where the aircraft carrier Franklin had been severely damaged. Missouri's task group then entered the contested zone to cover the damaged vessel's retreat and allow her to reach a safe area. Missouri was temporarily transferred to Task Force 59 in March, along with her sister ships, New Jersey and Wisconsin, to shell the southern coast of Okinawa, where she suffered a savage attack that almost took her out of combat. Then, while escorting the carriers the following month, a kamikaze warplane dove directly into her, and the crew could not destroy the attacker before it struck the side of the vessel below the main deck. As the Japanese aircraft hit the battleship's hull, it spread gasoline on the deck, creating a relentless fire. However, a more significant tragedy was averted, as the brave crew put out the flames before the American ship suffered more damage. Surviving the kamikaze attack would favor the U.S. forces, as Missouri continued to deliver remarkable support to the fleet attacking Okinawa. 
Japan surrenders. As summer came, Missouri moved to the coast of Japan's main islands to continue her strikes on war-torn Tokyo. The second atomic bomb was then dropped on Nagasaki on August 9, 1945. After the overwhelming show of American firepower, the rumors spread amid the U.S. Navy that the Japanese forces were about to surrender. That rumor became a reality six days later. On August 21st, Missouri took part in the process of landing 200 U.S. officers in Japan with the objective of demilitarizing the country. Missouri's crew was informed two days later that they would host the surrender ceremony, one of the most significant events in modern history. The ship's crew was ecstatic. They immediately began preparations, including clearing and painting the battleship that would soon have the eyes of the entire world fixed upon her. On September 2nd, Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz boarded, along with General of the Army Douglas MacArthur, the Supreme Commander for the Allies, and the Japanese representatives, headed by Foreign Minister Mamoru Shigemetsu. They then proceeded to sign the Japanese Instrument of Surrender. Running aground After the war, USS Missouri became an essential naval asset, and she was tasked to travel around the world in diplomatic missions and shows of force. Nevertheless, by the late 1940s, the U.S. Navy was under enormous pressure to diminish its size. Because the Iowa-class battleships were so expensive to maintain, while also being considered obsolete in a world now dominated by carriers, they were among the first vessels to be decommissioned. Still, President Harry S. Truman refused to let Missouri suffer that fate, and going against the advice of Secretary of Defense Lewis Johnson, Secretary of the Navy John L. Sullivan, and Chief of Naval Operations Lewis E. Denfield, he instructed to leave her as is, as she was a ship of great symbolic significance. Then, on the morning of January 17, 1950, the last U.S. battleship in commission was moving on a training mission from Hampton Roads when she ran aground 1.6 miles from Thimble Shoal Light near Old Point Comfort. Missouri had hit shallow waters at great speed and was lifted over seven feet above the waterline. Meanwhile, her hull hit the remains of another shipwreck, which pierced the hull and became embedded within. The incident occurred during an exceptionally high tide, thus making an effort to free her extremely difficult and risky. It would take the aid of tugboats, pontoons, beach gear, and a rising tide, plus two weeks of work to set Missouri free and take her for repairs. Korea as the U.S. became involved in another major conflict in the Korean Peninsula, Missouri was summoned from the Atlantic Fleet and dispatched to the Korean Peninsula. While there, she would again become the headquarters of numerous admirals and high-ranking officers. Missouri was the first American battleship to reach Korean waters, and she immediately bombarded Sam Chuk on September 15, 1950, to distract enemy troops from the Incheon landings. It would be the first time since World War II that the battleship fired her guns at an enemy. Her efforts, along with those of the cruiser Helena and two destroyers, helped pave the way for the U.S. 8th Army offensive. The battle-hardened vessel would continue to deliver crucial bombardment support to several operations across Korea, while also serving as the home of some of the most essential admirals in the war effort. Her last bombardment mission took place in the Kojo area on March 25, 1953. The following day, her commanding officer, Captain Warner All Edsel, suffered a fatal heart attack while maneuvering her through the submarine net at Sasebo. She was then relieved as the 7th Fleet flagship by her sister ship, New Jersey, which had been recently reactivated. Missouri finally retired from the U.S. Navy after continuing to serve away from Korea. Still, her historical importance gave her a unique retirement plan. She was moored at Bremerton, west of Seattle, Washington, and served as a popular tourist attraction, drawing millions of visitors eager to see the surrender deck where Japan had renounced its war effort. Modern Warfare In the summer of 1984, under the Reagan administration's program to build a 600-ship navy, Missouri was reactivated and towed to the Long Beach Naval Yard to undergo modernization. The iconic American vessel was upgraded with the most advanced technology of the time, Four Mark 141 quad cell launchers for Harpoon anti-ship missiles, eight Mark 143 armored box launcher mounts for 32 Tomahawk cruise missiles, and four Phalanx rotary cannons for defense against enemy anti-ship missiles and aircraft. 
Her radar and fire control systems were also completely revamped, and she was fitted with electronic systems across her hull. To truly prepare the warship for the Cold War, Missouri was outfitted with the ANSLQ-25 Nixie torpedo lure system, an electronic warfare system, and another one to fire chaff rockets intended to mislead enemy missiles. Impressively, she was ready for combat once again. A Battleship Reborn Missouri launched her first Tomahawk missile at Iraqi targets at 1.40 a.m. on January 17, 1991, soon after the start of Operation Desert Storm. The battleship bombarded Iraq's beach defenses in occupied Kuwait, and would go on to provide constant support to U.S. troops by bombing enemy positions and launching Tomahawk missiles to devastate even the most secure enemy posts. She would also prove crucial to clearing the seas of mines to allow the coalition forces to reach the battlefront without incidents. By the end of the Gulf War, Missouri had fired a total of 783 shells and launched 28 Tomahawk cruise missiles, making her a vital asset in the operation. Only a year later, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, the U.S. found itself with no need for such a vast navy. However, no one was there to save the aging ship from being deactivated and decommissioned this time. The battleship was then sent into the U.S. Reserve Fleet, where she lay abandoned for six years. Soon after, the vehicle's significance was recognized, and the ship was delivered to Pearl Harbor in 1998, where she was restored as a museum ship. Today, she watches over the USS Arizona Memorial Site, remembering the brave men and women who lost their lives over 80 years ago. Thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed this story, click on the screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. Also, hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest content. And stay tuned for more.